register now to meet Mr. Crispin on the 18th of April at MAC, the UK's largest engineering and manufacturing exhibition. Astronomy fortune teller. Nonsense. This is the year of the locomotive. It's exactly as I thought. Mr Crispin here once again and welcome to my workshop. In today's video it is indeed a return to the locomotive so let's head over to the workbench and have a look at what's upcoming. Joining me at the workbench today is a range of components that have become known on this channel as the locomotive. Some of these components have been with me for many years and to answer the question on how many years I have dug out the um, drawings. Now these were provided to me by uh, Kieran Sparks and his cover letter at the front is dated 22nd of November 2010. Uh, the year being 2024 currently you can see that's quite a long time. Now um, this project has come in and out. I actually started this when I was at secondary school and it went off when I moved away to do an apprenticeship then sort of been bits and pieces ever since. Uh, people who've joined this channel in the last year or two may never have seen this because my focus of late has been more machine tools overhauling the Harrison surface grinder etc etc and uh, in some ways the last few years could be summarized by that old adage what do you do with your lathe and milling machine? Um, I make bits for my lathe and milling machine. Well, the time has come to draw a line under machine tool work. There's still a few bits I could do. There's a bridge port to rebuild. There's a 1953 Hardings chucker to overhaul. But uh, I'm drawing a line now. I've got more than enough equipment to progress on this. So the priority of the time I have to spend in the workshop over, let's say, the next year is going to be locomotive. So let's reposition the camera and have a look at some of the different groups of components and look at what exactly is still to be done. About a third of these components have never been on camera because I either did them before I started the YouTube channel or the odd piece has been done in amongst other things. So first of all, what is this supposed to look like? Well, here is a line drawing accompanied by some photographs of this very same locomotive built by a man called Jeff Moore. In terms of scale, the locomotive and tender measure about a metre and a half long, 60 inches roughly, and on a good day it should pull 10 to 15 people on a 5 inch gauge track. It is fired by coal. Now let's have a look at what's actually in front of us. This is the very first piece I ever made, this um, brass assembly, that is the tender hand pump. I was actually in the middle of silver soldering that in my workshop at home, when I got a phone call from Rolls-Royce to say I had a place on their apprenticeship so I can still remember doing that and I made some other pieces of that in the secondary school workshop um, accompanied by technician John Ashwell and head of department Dave Aldridge. Now moving on the tender frames came next and the tender frames are these pieces of flat metal here I did most of this in my original workshop at home I say original as in the one I started the channel in on the old Bridgeport M head um, and I did some of the work at the local college York College accompanied by Tony Simons and Nigel Cox who were very helpful the tender wheels I did on the Myford lathe in my original workshop and uh, other pieces of the tender are there you can see all these little pieces of bracketry and uh, pieces I made mostly by filing so the tender chassis is complete along with wheel sets, buffer beams, buffers, hand pump, uh, but, but there is still quite a bit to do on the tender. Uh, moving on, this main locomotive chassis is where a lot of my original subscribers join me. And as you can see there, it's, it's mostly uh, plate work and then some fabrications. The uh, horn blocks are made by uh, silver soldering, one eighth sheet steel together and uh, drilling and filing, axle boxes, axles etc. Then a lot of this work here has been the focus of probably four or five years ago. This is the um, cylinder block assemblies. You've got cylinder blocks, pistons and rods, valve rods, valve bobbins, slide bars, cylinder covers front and rear. Uh, and th this really was covered extensively in the main part of my channel before I 
got waylaid machine tools. So a couple of other pieces you can see there. These wheels I did at the Rolls-Royce Training School as an extension activity. Um, turned them and then on a CNC milling machine with help from Andy Langley and Pete Groom I did uh, mill the spokes out. Now these are actually going to face me with a bit of a challenge when the time comes because uh, although they look like a nice piece of machined wheel uh, and they don't actually look that much like a locomotive wheel because a locomotive wheel of course has oval spokes in section so I, I won't be going to the extent of making them fully oval but I'll need to do some kind of chamfering or rounding off so uh, and then those are the axles that accompany them these wheels sit at the front here uh, mounted on the front bogey so that is everything I've got today. Um, now let's look at what order I'm going to tackle this in. My immediate focus for now will continue to be the cylinder block assemblies. The cylinder blocks are actually finished, but there's a few more pieces that interact with the running gear coming forward, which I'm going to uh, major on. And just for clarity, let's see if we can uh, show what's going on here. So hopefully you can make out that's the cylinder block. Then we have the slide bars coming forward. Piston, you can see the rod, valve goes in at the top there, and uh, then those wheels there are the, the front wheels you see down there. So um, most imminently I'm going to make this piece here that sits on the front of the piston valve cylinder and supports the end of this rod as it goes back and forth. So that's what I'm going to do next, then there's the cross head to make and then there's assembling it all and uh, sort of getting them as a complete assembly of their own. Once the cylinder block assemblies are complete I will take them away and store them almost as a separate entity of their own and I will return my work to the chassis side of things. I will make the driving wheels to get this into a rolling chassis and I will then make the front bogey whilst I'm in axle and wheel mode I'll take these and make the front bogey which is an undercarriage which uh, sits under here and supports the front end of the locomotive and then I'll take the tender equipment that I've already made and I'll build the tender chassis. That will give me front bogey, locomotive and tender all as a big rolling chassis which I can then transplant the cylinder block assemblies back onto and from there make all the various rods and running gear to actually power the locomotive and convert the cylinder blocks motion into movement. That will then leave the boiler and then all the cab work, um, running boards etc. Okay so overall I think this is quite an exciting stage to be at however be under no illusions there is still a lot of work in what I have just described and on that basis I fully anticipate some return to locomotive videos in the future as I get stopped and uh, you know come back to it but overall progress will continue and um, if I was going to have given up I would have done so by now. So to finish off today what I thought we'd do is take the very next piece I'm going to make which is the bit that fits on the front of the cylinder block and do some sketching to show my thoughts on uh, how that's going to look and to do that we'll reconvene at the surface table. Right a quick engineering discussion on the next piece to make. This is the valve bobbin and it goes in this upper bore here and as it goes back and forth it controls the steam's inlet and outlet. Now on the front end of this rod are all these linkages. These linkages are actually what move it back and forth uh, but as they do so they exert forces in various directions in other words trying to waggle the end of that rod around and to try and keep everything in line a piece of apparatus exists which is bolted to the front of the cylinder block called the spindle valve guide. So this here supports the end of the rod and you can see the rod there. Now I appreciate from this view you don't get much of an idea of how it's doing that but basically there's a rail system that is, that is there to support this rod in the up and down direction. Now as Martin Evans drew this for the model you can see here he's actually um, come up with this plate work system which will become clear soon when I show you this. Uh, here is the cylinder block 
Here is the valve spindle. Here's the rods I referred to. And this piece here is what I've just shown you. This is what Martin Evans came up with. Um, this is a 5 inch spring block. And you can see that he's basically got the end of the valve spindle um, through a junction coming to this cross pin. And then the cross pin is running in this slot on the plate work assembly. So that is what Martin Evans came up with and that's how it's drawn. But refer back to the earlier photo I showed you of a full size locomotive. You can see actually it looks very different. Um, it's actually a casting that comes round here and then it has some rail sections bolted on. So um, instead of the pin just running in a, in a slot, it runs in a rail. Um, now both of these really do the same thing and I don't think there's much difference in function, uh, certainly not in the model size, but personally I'm not a huge fan of these plate work assemblies. Um, I can see why he did it because this is sort of 1950s era and in those eras most model engineers just had a lathe, a pillar drill and files and bench tools so uh, with a lack of milling equipment I think they opted for more plate work stuff that could be done with files um, but the problem with these plate work assemblies is they're quite fiddly and they're actually quite hard to get accurate because by the time you've got a plate on one side a plate on the other and bits in the middle you have to get it all lined up somehow and it's actually quite tricky so um, seeing as that's tricky anyway I'm going to go for something more along these lines I'm not going to copy it exactly um, but I am going to come up with something similar that, that suits what I've already made and so in the next video I will be coming up and making a valve spindle guide or a pair of them to something along the lines of this although not exactly. So uh, that is what's coming up as my first component on the return to the locomotive and uh, let me know in the comments how much detail you want me to go into on all this side of it or whether you'd rather I just got on with the machining. So there we are. For long and medium term viewers of this channel, hopefully you've seen a few new pieces. And for new viewers of the channel, it may be worth mentioning that it was this locomotive that was actually my original video project back when I started filming machining topics. So I'm looking forward to getting back to it and hopefully there'll be some progress out here soon. Now without over advertising it, don't forget I'll be at Mac at the NEC in Birmingham. I will be there on the 18th of April, which is the Thursday. I'll be there for the full day and nearer the time, uh, probably end of this week, I will post some exact details of where you can find me at what times in case you are there and you'd like to say hello. Apart from that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting and see you on the next video.